Right, hi, it's John Glynn. Uh, today on Photoshop Elements 20, we're going to be looking at the tools at the bottom here on the toolbox. Uh, it's got the blur tool at the moment. If I just click on it, you'll see blur tool. And if you move down to the bottom of your picture area below your photo, you'll see the blur tool, um, the sharpen tool, and the smudge tool. Okay, so you've got three tools, and we're going to quickly have a look at those three. These work on your actual picture, um, so they're not uh, you, you're not working on these within any form of layer apart from your background, which is on the top of the right hand side of your layers palette. You'll have background layer, you are, you are working on that specific layer. If I would actually advise you to uh, make a duplicate copy, so um, just I'm using a mouse I'm using a PC computer um, so nothing special here it's just uh, if you click the right mouse key you get duplicate layer I'm going to duplicate it and just call it background copy and there you have it and you can work on the background copy now you can turn off your background one with a little magic eye and um, and work on this one and if anything should go wrong you've got the original picture underneath anyway or you may want to merge them in some way so it, effectively you you've got choices um, so first things first we to, we're going to um, soften I'm going to blur part of this particular picture but to do that I'm going to zoom in um, the reason I'm going to zoom in is because you can see it more quickly and effectively so I'll um, I'm just going to zoom in on the keyboard control plus um, and if I if I then pick up um, there we are there we are there uh, we're in the right place now what I'm going to do is just blur this particular sign it's easier doing that you'll find that most of these things I, I've been mucking around so I, my numbers down here probably keep changing but the the, the the strength of the blur is usually 50% okay as standard setting in in Adobe 50% um, is quite strong so if I started blurring at 50% uh, and move my mouse over the sign it starts blurring fairly quickly and you just keep on clicking on moving your mouse around it and you'll see that it it blurs if um, you want it to go more quickly I'll undo all of that and then I'll up it and you see the difference if we I'll bring up uh, window history and I can just make sure that I'm um, get rid of the blur tool <coughs> okay doke, there we are if you do history you can undo a whole load of settings all in one go you don't have to do them one at a time through undo 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 uh, history can do that by just you'll see it building up as I do stuff now actually so if I'll do strength and I'll up it it will blur things more quickly so the, the stronger your strength is the quicker it will blur okay um, and each time I click uh, you'll notice in the in the history on the right hand side here um, each time I click it will add one extra action now you have 50 action as a standard you can extend that but as a standard setting 50 is is the setting that you'll have once you do 51 uh, you can't undo the previous group without starting all over again okay so if you take it to 49 or something and think oh I don't like it you can go right the way back to the beginning click the very first option you can see there what it looks like and click on them and get an idea of what they all look like click on the very first one click the right mouse key press delete say okay and there you have it you've got your high street okay um, and you can start again now with this blur tool generally speaking we don't um, we don't have it at a really high setting to start with we would really use it at a very very low setting and the reason being that we're then in control of how much blur we add and we do it slowly and we build it up slowly and then eventually when we're happy with it you may just take it slightly beyond where you want or you feel it's right and then you can undo that little bit so that you get it to the level you want slowly and you're not rushing the job so these tools blur tool and the sharpen tool 
and and in and smudge for that matter would be used uh, minimally if you like it would all be done on a, on a low level a low setting but as as the opening is 50% and we would advise that's too high um, we would normally put it down to maybe 10% or even less you know so how here we go I'll go on to sharpen sharpen again would be set at 50% if these if you can actually change these numbers yourself you don't have to um, move the little dial up and down if you don't want to you can just literally uh, just go in and click and we have here 50% um, and this is for sharpening and you can see it almost working straight away it sort of cleans things up now if you take sharpening too far it will actually end up adding peculiar colors and artifacts I'll zoom in a bit more on that so you can get a better view of it you can see quite clearly that you start getting some weird artifacts if you over sharpen and that goes on any form of sharpening in Photoshop um, or any software for that matter it introduces other issues um, which look odd so generally speaking we would not want to over sharpen and most of the time you won't need to sharpen but if uh, some people will advise sharpening even on a JPEG but we would do it minimally so you'd reduce it and again just slowly do it so you just take it to a point where you're you're happy with the overall look all you're doing is really increasing contrast and you just do it slightly you wouldn't want to over, to have it to a point which was ludicrous so then you can flip back and go very back to the very first see on my, sh my history palette here I've clicked on the very first sharpen tool I can add, um, I say that was the original and then I can go to the most recent and you can get an idea of what the difference would be and whether you want to take it further or whether you'd be happy with that <coughs> excuse me um, in your for your reproduction whatever you're going to do with your picture um, but you would do it quite slowly rather than dramatically and that means you're in control of the whole process uh, the brushes by the way you do have ways of doing modes so you can darken lighten normal is what we've got on here and uh, different types of brushes you get hard edged and soft edged brushes generally you'd use soft edged brushes because you're wanting to blend in any of the effects you're going to do into the background so it doesn't look like you've done it um, on purpose so uh, generally speaking it's a soft edge brush we're using which is what I've got uh, marked up in my in my brush and the size well you just change the size either through the slider here to get the right size of brush you're wanting obviously if it's too big it will look ludicrous so you're not going to do that and I can't now get that's it and now I can reduce it um, at to a normal size brush okay so you've got a brush there if you can also change brush sizes by using your brackets on the keyboard left hand bracket makes it smaller right hand bracket makes it bigger so that may be the quickest and easiest way of of changing a brush size okay next thing we'll look at I'll undo all the sharpening uh, and we're going to go to smudge uh, again you've got the same kind of idea you've got finger painting effects you can do as well you've got soft and hard edge brushes you've got different ways of of playing with this particular tool as well and what it does um, and again it would normally be set at 50% as standard um, but we can uh, and I'll just change the size of the brush because that's a bit on the small side to be using for a lesson Oops. there we are um, now I can do some weird stuff with with smudging I must admit I've never used it but uh, it might be useful for something um, off the top of my head I can't think of anything but there we have a smudge it may be for painting purposes if you're trying to create some sort of creative or strange art um, I can understand why you might do the finger painting but again you would normally do anything like this uh, with um, with a lower a lower strength I don't even have to lower strength 
it's quite quick at, at doing stuff okay smudging your picture uh, again I'm just going back to history um, click the right mouse key delete history and say okay there we are uh, nice and quick yeah so yeah have a have a play with that I don't as I say, I'm not too sure what you do this much but you might find there's something in your paint your photographs that you would like to to smudge uh, the other thing um, so that's it I mean that, that's basically I don't think there is much else actually to look at in that it is a matter of just trying them out uh, sampling all layers um, is if you have layers and you, you can turn them on and try things with other layers otherwise it's just uh, on the layer you're working with and finger painting um, if we put that on let's just see what it does much the same there you have it um, as opposed to not finger painting <laughs> uh, yeah oh, have a go um, again it, as I said it's not something I've ever used um, in a normal photograph okay um, but certainly the blur and sharpen may be useful blur maybe more so okay thanks very much for for watching and do have a go